bed, I've got my skeleton, because I just wanted to talk to you about rotation. Um, when I see new clients and we talk about rotation and when they turn, they tend to turn from their um, lumbar spines and then wonder why they have back pain. So rather than using your lumbar spine to turn, we have to concentrate on rotating from the thoracic spine, mainly because the vertebrae are very different the way that they, um, the way that they kind of fit on top of each other. And from the thoracic spine, I'm talking about the vertebrae from the base of the neck. There's 12 vertebrae in the, in the thoracic spine. So the base of the neck going down to uh, just above the, the belly button, just before the, um, the lumbar spine starts. And there's five vertebrae in your lumbar spine that's, that starts just above the navel and it goes, towards, um, goes down to the sacrum, which is where the pelvis is. Huh. Okay, so now you've got that. So we're talking about the thoracic, so all the, um, the ribs, and when we turn, turning from the ribs, um, more rotation um, because of the way the, um, the, the facet joints sit on top of each other, here there's more space for them to rotate, rather than on the lumbar when they're a lot closer together and they're not made for rotation. Okay, so lumbar is for flexion and extension, flexion going forward, extension going back, so when we're bending over and when we're taking it back. Um, and thoracic is more for rotation, even though we're still going forward and back, but you rotate from there. So, oh, get my words out in a minute. So when we're doing, when I'm in class or with Pilates and we're doing a session or even with um, clients that come to me with shoulder issues, and I go through a shoulder decompression, then obviously there's a holding pattern as well, and we do um, inner range holds when we're on all fours, lifting the arm out in front, which, let me move you for a second, looks a little bit like this. Holding the arm up. So I take it as far as I think the arm should go to its passive range, and then um, the client holds the arm up there for about 10 seconds and then slowly lowers it and then we go on to the other side. So we start with ten on, three on each side and work our way up to 10 on each side. Okay, so um, we're also trying to get some rotation going as well. So rotation, um, I can do um, the spine twist, which is one of the Pilates moves, which if, if people have got very tight shoulders here and tend to have one shoulder higher than the other, if we go into um, a, an intermediate um, position with, with the spine twist, which can be here with arms or here, or depending on your shoulders. Um, this can be quite a lot for your shoulders to take, especially if you're doing about three to five repetitions. It doesn't sound like very much, but usually after the first repetition, you can see that the shoulder starts to take over and turn the body rather than it coming from here. So that's why we usually start from here in the prayer position. It's nice and easy, there's no weight on the shoulders. You've got to lengthen through the crown of the head so the head isn't dropping down, the head's not coming forward. As every inch forward of when you're in a plumb line position, um, if the, the weight of the head just lands in your middle and lower back. So we're trying to keep the, the crown of the head lengthened so you're lifting out of your spine. The nose and the fingers stay in line with the breastbone. So almost as if they're all attached, well they aren't all attached, but they're just not going to move away or deviate. So as you rotate, the head doesn't move, it just stays in line with your finger. Otherwise you feel as if you think, yeah, I'm going a long way, and your head's turning, you think, I've got great rotation. Your body's only turned about half an inch, but the head's gone, woohoo, we're doing the exorcist. So we don't really looking for, not be looking for that at all. What we're looking for is a rotation here. So think about the circle of the rib cage being suspended above the circle of the pelvis. Almost like they're almost like you've got a jam jar, and the bottom of the jam jar is what you're holding on to, and you're turning the lid. So you're going one way, the pelvis stays still, like you're stuck in cement, nothing's going to turn. And when you come back, come back down, round the other way, exactly the same thing. Don't bring the opposite hip with you. So you're working your obliques, the abdominals, the muscles down your spine, the erector spinae muscles. Shoulders, trying to, sh trying to bring your shoulders down, not jamming the shoulders down, but just softly sliding them down your back. So we're not using the upper trapezius muscle, scalenes, or the vagus scapula to turn us. 
we really are focusing on the, uh, the muscles here, mainly the obliques to turn us. Um, the lats also come into play, and obviously the abdominals, transverse abdominus. Um, um, and I think that's going to be about all I'm going to go into, otherwise we'll get into the scientific side of things and you'll just be thinking, what is she going on about? So you can also think about sitting on your sit bones, these little bony bits at the bottom of the pelvis, your ischial tuberosities, such a great word. Um, so making sure that they are equal on each side, right and left. So you're not sitting on your poor little sacrum. Your poor little sacrum is something that you probably sit on when you're slouching watching TV in the evenings or when you're sitting on a computer, um, doing something on your computer. Try and get off your sacrum so it doesn't get compressed and sit on your sit bones. That's why they're called sit bones, because you want to sit on them. Okay, so there you go. That's a little bit about rotation. So the more you practice your rotation, the freer you're going to feel, the more easier you're going to be able to rotate. Um, functionally, as you're um, driving in your car, if you're, if you're reversing backwards, uh, rather than really twisting from your lower back or just turning your head and getting neck strain, using your thoracic to rotate and turn you. Okay, any questions? Send me a little message at uh, mel.colly at live.co.uk or have a look at my blog and website, which is melcolly, C-O-L-L-I-E, dot com. Thanks very much for watching. Okay.